this is a story all about how I went vegan and turned my life around. Now I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there, I'll tell you how I became an ethical vegan, oh yeah. Hey, what's up guys, it's Maxine, and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't guessed yet, today's video is going to be me basically answering one of the most frequently asked questions as a vegan, and that is, why did you go vegan? Why did you go vegan? What made you go vegan? Are you like vegan for health? Or why are you vegan? Did you have to go vegan or did you choose to go vegan? Basically, there is so much curiosity about why somebody would go vegan. And in this video, I'm just gonna explain why I went vegan. I've been vegan for almost six years and I've answered this question so many times throughout those years. And basically, the next time somebody asks me why I went vegan, I'm just gonna show them this video. <laughs> okay, so jokes aside, I did go vegan for a very serious reason. And basically, I made an entire lifestyle change based on this reason. And the number one reason I went vegan is for the animals. Because I just did so much research on how they're treated in factory farms and what goes into producing meat and dairy. And when I learned all the cruelty towards animals behind these industries, then I literally just can't support that. I didn't know the reality of what goes into factory farming and once I learned about it, because I've always been very open-minded to learn new things, I've always felt that knowledge is power. Once I found out the reality that goes on behind the scenes, I 100% could never support that. Growing up, I've always loved animals, so I've always known I was an animal lover ever since I was younger. I basically only played with stuffed animals, so I was always very in tune to how much I loved animals. I was very open-minded to this as a young kid. I remember I did a project on dinosaurs, and I, when I learned that the bronchosaurus was literally like so peaceful, he didn't kill any other animals, he just ate like plants, I was like, oh, he's so cute and peaceful, I love him. Like literally, I even was open-minded to it then. <laughs> the next thing is a huge reason why I went vegan also, and that is for health. I really did learn so much about how meat and dairy is just not meant for our bodies at all. And basically when we consume this for years and years and years, eventually it just makes us sick. And environmental reasons is huge also. That's just like a huge perk because like we live on one planet. We all live on one planet. And there are a lot of factors that come from the meat and dairy industry that do very much contribute to global warming and environmental issues. But yeah, that's the order. Ethical, health, environment. <laughs> but really all in all, all of these reasons are extremely important in their own way. And everybody I feel like goes vegan for one of those reasons. But yeah, initially 100% when I found out all of the cruelty and pain these animals have to endure, I just was freaking blown away because you know like society doesn't want us to know about any of this they want us to stay in this like ignorant kind of bubble and continuously buying these products and eating them and everything like have you ever noticed on tv all of the commercials that always promote like meat and cheeseburgers and cheese and more cheese and all of that like all these commercials and then literally the commercial right after it is medicine or trying to promote this pill you should take because you're so sick and you need to take medicine. And oh my God, ask your doctor about this new pill out. And then they just go off and list all of these side effects that come from these drugs and everything. So it's all based on money. Like I feel like the meat and dairy industries aren't so much based on we should be eating this because it's meant for our bodies or health or whatever. It's, it's literally all about money. Yeah, so they just want us to stay in our like little bubble of happiness thinking that like cows are grazing in the grass like have you ever seen one of those big milk trucks pass by on the highway and literally the entire truck is just like one big open field of grass with like a sun and like a red barn behind the one cow and the cow is just like so happy and peaceful in the sun like no <laughs> that is not how it is that is a hundred percent completely advertising commercial like Bullshit. That is just so, so not how it is re in reality. I mean, if you think about it, there are billions of people on this planet who eat meat and dairy. I'm not exactly sure how many people are like in America, but they all eat meat and dairy and it's in excess. Like we're not out there hunting and, and killing one animal for like to feed our whole family and like whatever. It's all in excess. So people don't eat meat once a day, they eat it Every, with every single meal. So when billions of people need meat and dairy in excess, they need to create things called factory farming. 
And in these factory farms, thousands and thousands of animals are just shoved into these buildings in the dark. They cut down the Amazon. Basically, the Amazon is literally burning down right now. It's so sad. But it's being burned down because they need to create more space for cattle. It's just a huge, huge industry. There's so much to talk about with factory farming. Thousands of animals packed on top of each other in cages or cage free which is really not cage free because imagine like a room packed to the top with animals like just on top of each other so that doesn't really cons it's not really considered cage free when you're basically over packing animals in a room because one room can be considered one huge cage if it's completely unethically done it's hard not to get heated talking about this topic because I love animals because honestly they're so smart and also who are we to judge like which animal is smarter than others and just because we maybe are more intelligent than certain species of animals we should be exploiting them and controlling them and everything like what does that say about us like we protect humans you can't take a special needs child and start exploiting the special needs child and all of that just because he's not as intelligent as other humans like so regardless on oh well they're not as smart as us so they don't deserve our rights they don't deserve the right to be what left alone they don't deserve the right it's not like we're talking about animal rights like oh they deserve the right to vote <laughs> Vote for the cows and chickens. <laughs> like, what? No, we're not talking about the right to fucking vote. We're talking about the right to just live a peaceful life. Like, we're talking about the right to just not have to be in pain all the time and just live peacefully and just be left alone. I mean, like, every animal, and yes, we are animals too, every animal is put on this planet for their own reasons. We all have babies, we all procreate, we all feed our children, even cows and chickens. And all these animals, like, we all do these things. We all build nests and homes in ways, in different ways, for our babies and our families. And we eat, we sleep, we go to the bathroom, we, we all have emotions. Even cows and pigs and chickens have emotions. I mean, a lot of people wouldn't agree with that, but they're just ignorant. Because if you watch videos of these slaughterhouses and factory farms, you will see that they have emotions when they're screaming when they're screaming they're obviously in pain yeah so they have emotions you can see the look on their eyes when they're you know sad or scared or in pain like it's very clear and people who don't think so are just totally ignorant yeah so basically society wants you to believe one thing so that you can buy their products and continue to live in your happy bubble of you know drinking cow's milk and eating meat and all that but um there's a lot of dark, negative cruelty that goes into these industries. And yeah, so animals are so similar to us, people don't even realize. Like, people think that cows, well, society wants people to think this. They obviously, like, shun us from the truth and stuff. So people don't even really register the fact that cows don't magically produce milk. They're not milk producing machines they don't magically produce milk just like humans don't magically produce milk every female animal has to be pregnant to produce milk we have to give birth to produce milk so they artificially inseminate the cows and pigs which is actually a nice way to put it because if you artificially inseminate a human against their will then that's raping them so basically the cows and the pigs and the chickens and all of the animals in slaughterhouses are raped by being artificially inseminated with like rods. They're basically put in like this metal cage and that's done to them. They have to go through pregnancy and once their baby is born, their baby is ripped away from them and they are just now producing milk for as long as they will naturally produce milk. Yeah, so it's just a really cruel industry. If baby cow is born female, then she will be going into the dairy industry and if the calf is born male, then he will be going into the veal industry. Same things with chickens, they're treated the same way. Uh, female chickens go into the laying eggs industry and male chickens literally go down a grinder. Like they're, they're, all the male chickens are thrown on this conveyor belt and thrown into a grinder, alive. Like, And the only reason why we consume cow's milk as opposed to like pig milk or rat milk or monkey milk or 
giraffe milk or any type of other milk. The only reason why it's cow's milk is not because we are meant to drink cow's milk for our bodies or anything. It's because they produce a lot of milk. So what does that mean to the government and society? It means money. When they produce a lot of milk, there's a lot of money to be made, a lot of products to be made because of all the milk and all that. Just so much that goes into the meat and dairy industry. Honestly, I can talk about this forever. And like each individual topic has so much information behind it. Like that's why I keep going off on tangents basically because it's like, once I start talking about one thing, it just leads into all these other things. So there's just so much information about this. And it's hard not to get like mad about it because it's just happening every second of the day. Yeah, so I went vegan for the animals, an ethical vegan. I made the ethical connection. And it just, when I talk about it and it brings up all of the like reality and facts, um, I get really like passionate and mad about it because it's crazy. There's just so much information out there that I didn't know about, a lot of people don't know about, and society doesn't want you to know about. So honestly, I always just felt like knowledge is power and I took it upon myself to learn more because I was very interested and open-minded in this topic. So I can talk about that forever, but um, the other reason why I went vegan is for health. I also did a lot of research on health and how meat and dairy really isn't meant for our bodies. And that was really interesting to learn about because I really never put any thought into that before. Like I've always been interested in being healthy because I just feel like I feel the best when I eat good and clean and all that. And growing up, I always loved fruit and vegetables and stuff. But I mean, I did not grow up in a house that was like healthy or anything like that. Like we had a lot of takeout. We ate a lot of meat. Yeah, I mean, like, I had, like, oatmeal for breakfast every day as a kid, which is healthy, so that's good, but, like, I don't know. I just, we weren't really a health food house or anything like that, like, but I still was interested in it, like, as I got older. You know, like, you want to stay fit and in shape and stuff, so, like, it's, it was always an interesting topic, but I, I learned that meat and dairy is not meant for our bodies because, like, biologically, we're not designed to eat meat. A misconception that a lot of people have and i think that's because like society wants us to be educated in a way that of course benefits them right so if people think that we're carnivores they're gonna think oh, i need to eat tons of meat but that's not the case one of the main things that differentiates us from being carnivore is our teeth basically people think because we have canines this i guess is supposedly a canine um that makes us carnivores but if you look at the mouth of a carnivore, that is a canine. <laughs> this is like flat. All of our teeth are flat. I've never had braces. I've never friggin' had my teeth filed. None of that. Like our teeth are human teeth and they're flat. <laughs> carnivore teeth are really, really long canines. Like those teeth are meant for ripping through like flesh and and tearing the skin and like all this crazy nasty shit that like I can't even talk about. Like their jaw is so strong and their mouth has such sharp friggin' long canine teeth that they are just meant for, you know, like naturally ripping the animal apart with their mouth. Like if we tried to do that, we would break our teeth. <laughs> also a true carnivore's jaw opens like up and down, like they rip and swallow and we don't, have jaws like that they don't just go up and down they go side to side like this in like a grinding motion and carnivores can't do that yeah so that's like a huge reason why they're meant to eat meat and we're meant to eat vegetation like fruit and vegetables and and like grains and wheat also like our nails are nothing like carnivore nails because we have an opposing i think it's called an opposing thumb where our thumb can bend and touch every single one of our fingers. And that's only found in herbivores, in animals that are like way closer to our design biologically. And also our nails are really thin and brittle. And I mean, some people have really strong nails, but we don't have claws. The nails for a carnivore is meant to catch their prey. So like, that's why a lot of times the nail comes out or the nail is really, really, really sharp because they're meant to like run and jump and pounce on their prey and like grab it. Like our nails and teeth would literally break if we tried to run, pounce, jump on an animal, rip the animal apart. Like also um, the intestines, our intestines I think are about 30 feet long. We have such long intestines. I think it's like the length of a football field or something. It's crazy long and they're all just kind of like, we have small intestines and large intestines and they're all just like 
jumbled up in our bodies and basically the intestines of a real carnivore only is a length of like six feet long and literally the meat just goes in and out like there's no rotting process in the body but because our intestines are so long when you consume meat it literally has all of this intestines to get through before it leaves your body and it's essentially rotting in your body while it's digesting so of course that can cause a lot of problems and in your body that becomes very toxic and that can cause future problems like cancer and like all these other like intestinal problems and there's just a lot that goes into that too but yeah, the meat is literally like rotting in your body versus a carnivore. It doesn't do that. It goes in and out. Their intestines are so short. And that's why, that's another reason why they can consume raw meat, raw flesh. And another thing is they can consume raw meat and they don't get sick. Like we have to cook our meat. Like we have to cook chicken. Like we can't eat raw chicken or we will get very sick. But yeah, I've heard that like some people will say, I eat raw meat, I can eat raw meat or whatever the hell. But, but honestly, I would challenge that person to go on the side of the road and get roadkill and literally eat roadkill. I'm sure they're not gonna wanna eat that raw meat. Also carnivores, true carnivores catch their prey naturally. Like they can hunt and catch their prey naturally. We can't. Like, they don't need tools or anything else to catch their prey. They can just naturally run after and kill and whatever, but, like, we can't do that naturally. We need tools. Honestly, 99% of the people who eat chicken can't actually catch a chicken. <laughs> like, go ahead, try to chase a chicken around in your yard. Even Rocky couldn't catch a damn chicken. <laughs> so now that you guys know some of the main reasons about why I went vegan, now I'm going to share with you how I went vegan. Like... How can anybody eat her? No, you're like a little piglet. So I just did it gradually. I did it a little bit at a time, but I did initially go vegetarian overnight. The paper that I did in college was, um, I had to pick a health topic and it was why you should go vegetarian. I was always really interested in vegetarianism and veganism. And so I picked this topic and it just gave me the opportunity to like learn a lot more about all these different industries and stuff. Yeah, so after learning a lot about the meat industry, I went vegetarian and I was vegetarian for like four years. Definitely being vegan started to really resonate with me. Once my morals started to change and I started to agree with like everything that goes into the vegan lifestyle, I just, it was just inevitable for me to want to go vegan. But I did it gradually by buying like almond milk and soy milk and coconut milk and vegan cheese and things like that. I started to bring these vegan options into my household. And so like at least like when I was home, I was putting almond milk in my coffee or cereal or whatever and um, I wasn't like consuming them at home but if I was out maybe like at a restaurant I would still eat them if they were in cooked food or whatever but like Dunkin Donuts has offered almond milk for a long time now so Dunkin and Starbucks and stuff I was getting like the non-dairy options in that but like yeah like I just slowly started to transition myself by doing that like I would buy and just replace the product. So like instead of buying regular butter, I would buy the Earth Balance Vegan Butter. And when I would use butter at home, that's the one that I would use. Or dressings for salads or mayo or whatever. Like anything I bought that had animal products in it, I just started to kind of buy the vegan version of it. So I was never actually giving anything up. I was just replacing it with the vegan version, which is I feel like a huge, huge thing when somebody's transitioning into going vegan because some people think like when you go vegan you have to give up all of this food or you have to give up your favorite stuff or that's not true like you just have to buy the vegan version of whatever was your favorite or whatever like you just have to buy the vegan version so that you can make the same things but vegan so that's how I transitioned throughout the couple of years of me being vegetarian and like starting to transition into being vegan my boyfriend Ryan who I lived with was still eating meat and dairy and everything but he he slowly started to catch on to like the fact that I was feeling better and why I was doing it and stuff so he started to get interested in it also and he actually like realized he was pescatarian for a while like without even trying to be because he wasn't eating as much meat I think he was at one point he like wasn't eating meat at all except fish at some point he decided to go vegetarian also so we were vegetarian for one year together and in that time he still ate dairy and everything. But I was already starting to slowly transition into being vegan but we were definitely able to eat like a lot of meals together now like it made it a lot easier because 
we cook in the same house or we go out to eat or whatever. That was really cool because we had that in common now. And after about a year of me transitioning, I had given everything up and replaced it with the vegan version except cheese. That was the last thing that I needed to give up in order to go vegan. And at that point, Ryan kind of jumped on the bandwagon also. Like at that point, he had learned a lot of things about being vegan also and it started to change his morals and his ideas of like what he believes and stuff. So we were very much on the same page with a lot of this stuff. And it's funny too, because I was always like the person who was open-minded and like knowledge is power and all of that. And he wasn't like, he was the type of person that like didn't know and didn't want to know and didn't want to talk about it. And I really didn't like bug him or anything. And the only time I would ever put my two cents into something was if he would make a comment like, oh, like you're eating whatever. Like if he would make a comment, then I would be like, well, actually you're eating whatever. <laughs> I would drop like a truth bomb on him and it would be like, oh wow. like. Yeah, so eventually he started to realize that he was very interested in this also. So we decided to go vegan together and that was pretty amazing because we were able to do this whole thing together whereas a lot of people have to go vegan alone. But just know that like do whatever you think feels right because I went vegetarian alone and it turned into like this trickle effect that helped my boyfriend go vegan and we, we ended up doing it together. So just do what you believe in, do what makes you feel the best, stick to your beliefs and morals and, and be positive about it and you'll be surprised. Like people will start jumping on the bandwagon with you and be inspired by you and stuff. So we ended up going vegan together and it really was amazing because now we were in this together. The next day after going vegan together, we literally went through the kitchen and we threw out everything that had animal products in it and we just like started fresh. Well, we had a lot of vegan products in the house already. It's not like we cleaned out, cleaned out our whole kitchen, but like everything that had animal products in it, we, we threw out. And we just started this lifestyle together and we literally never went back. Because honestly, I feel like once you make the ethical connection, I mean, going in this for health is huge also. But you know, once you make the ethical connection, I feel like you're doing it for somebody else. Like you have a higher purpose because now you're not just doing it for yourself. You have other beings that like are kind of relying on you to make a difference and that's honestly like a huge reason why i'm vegan and why i will be vegan for life <laughs> yeah so honestly like i'm vegan for almost six years now and just do your research so yeah i slowly transitioned into being vegan and i feel like that's a good thing to do because you never are like what should i eat or what do i do or whatever like just taking it one day at a time or one thing at a time yeah, so go vegan and do what you think is right. Do what you believe in, live your truth. Just try to make the ethical connection because it is life-changing if you really like put all the pieces together and make the ethical connection as well as like the health connection. That's huge too. Yeah, just like do you and make a difference. One person does make a difference. People always say like, well, I'm just one person. What can that do? Like it really can do a lot. Like, it's kind of cliche, but like one drop in the ocean starts a ripple effect, continues to make this like ripple effect that just vibrates outwards. And one person can make a change. It just takes one person to make a change. And if you start living like your life and your truth, people will notice that around you, especially if you start to feel better. Definitely go vegan. It's a huge lifestyle change. Change. but like I said if you do it very like gradually like I did it really doesn't feel like that huge of a lifestyle change because I didn't grow up like this I didn't grow up vegan or vegetarian or anything so honestly if I can do it and if Ryan my boyfriend can do it literally anybody can do it and stay motivated by continuing to learn and research about ethical reasons and health and the environment and a lot of different things and yeah like you'll be surprised you'll you'll start feeling better your health will improve Something that also really helped me go vegan, like huge reason was watching a lot of YouTube videos like on vegan people and their lifestyles and stuff. Like Durian Rider on YouTube had a big influence on me and my boyfriend going vegan. And Freely, a lot of her older videos like really helped us go vegan. And Gary Orofsky gives this speech called the best speech you'll ever hear or something. And he goes to different colleges and he he gives this speech and that was just like literally the best speech ever if you're trying to go vegan. I'll link that speech below because it's huge. Like send it to your family and stuff. It puts a lot of things in perspective. Nina and Randa on YouTube also, they're twins. They come from a family, their whole family's vegan. 
They personally, like them and their family personally know a lot of vegan doctors. Dr. McDougal, and there's a lot of different vegan doctors out there and they're so good. Yeah, like I just watched a lot of YouTube videos. I read a lot of articles. I read studies. I There's a lot of information out there. You just have to like take it upon yourself to try to learn. Also watch a lot of documentaries. Like I literally watched a lot of documentaries on Netflix like Cowspiracy. That's a good one too because I, I feel like that one doesn't show too much graphic stuff. But still, like if you're not vegan, you should be watching a lot of this graphic stuff. Just to kind of learn about like what really is happening, you know? Like, or even if you're vegan but you really haven't quite made the ethical connection yet, you know, I think you should watch some of this graphic stuff too. But I mean, like, I am an ethical vegan. Like, I can't watch that graphic shit anymore because once you make the connection, it's really traumatizing to watch things like that. So, like, yes, I've watched a whole lot of stuff and I always just felt like if I can't watch it, then how am I supporting it? So, you know, making this transition, I did watch a lot of it. But, but good documentaries are Cowspiracy. Earthlings is a good documentary, too. That goes into a lot of the factory farming stuff. What's the Health is a really good one. That goes into a lot of stuff with health and how there's, like, a lot of, like, fake studies that go out by the meat and dairy industry to make people think that it's, like, healthy for you. A lot of these, like, studies out there are funded by cancer societies and, like, meat and dairy industries and drug companies and, like, they're funded by these things. So yeah, th and there's many more. Like those are just the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. But they're so interesting because it does all the research for you, you know? Like these documentaries literally do all the research for you. You just have to sit there, relax, and like watch it. It's very educational and it puts a lot of things in perspective for you. One of the main things that I liked learning about being vegan and stuff is like all of the light bulb moments that I had, like the aha uh -huh moments, the things that like I would learn about and be like, what? like wow that's so true like wow i didn't realize that before or i didn't know that or that makes so much sense or wow like i mean stuff like i feel like like all of those moments that gave me that feeling was just so life-changing so like definitely i encourage you guys to watch these documentaries and stuff or youtube videos or just read about it and just keep learning because knowledge is power and why not <laughs> but yeah the animals need us so go vegan like they're suffering every single day so go vegan and don't support those crazy cruel industries Thank you for watching. Anyway, that is how I went vegan and why I went vegan. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and want to see me make more videos about being vegan. Also, leave me a comment below telling me the reason why you went vegan. Like, it's always so interesting to learn about the different reasons people go vegan and and I would love to read about some of your stories so definitely leave me a comment below telling you why you went vegan. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future videos and hit the bell for post notifications so that you're notified the next time I upload. Follow me on Instagram, it's just at Maxine Glynn. Alright guys, thanks for watching and go vegan. Go vegan. Go vegan. Go vegan. Go vegan. Go vegan. What? What? Go vegan. My name is Maxine. What? And I'm a vegan, yeah, and I love animals, yeah. Well, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? <laughs>